um, um, haircut. Yeah, we know you want a haircut. Are we gonna have to give you a haircut tonight? Mm -hmm. That's what it does. Haircut. Today's video, we're gonna give Naomi a haircut. Now, I know there are a lot of kids that have Down syndrome or autism. There's a lot of sensory processing going on when it comes to touching your head, cutting your hair, all that fun stuff. And so we're gonna kind of push through it. Except she does like haircuts a little bit. Do you like haircuts? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's sitting on the couch and she's avoiding the camera right now, which is usually not normal for you. Come here. Now I'm gonna jump in and give you some voice over here because I wanted to give you some more information on sensory processing disorder, sensitive scalps, when it comes to cutting hair. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about Naomi. I mean, first of all, let's just talk about how she usually is ready to jump up. Instead though, she does insist on her big sister to go first. Now this is something that you can do when your child is struggling with any new situations or something that could potentially be traumatizing and hair cutting can potentially be traumatizing for some kids. Getting a sibling involved or watching them get a haircut first can kind of mo motivate them to do it. They see that it's safe, they see them laughing, they see them having fun, and they want to be involved. It's almost like childhood FOMO. You know, fear of missing out, they got to jump in and do it too. Now this girl does actually have some sensory processing going on. She's a very sensitive, sensitive scalp. So something that our occupational therapist taught me with her head is to do an exercise where you can do like little pulls. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're gonna do that. So I'm doing little pulls just to get her head kind of desensitized. And also putting my hand on her head while I'm brushing or combing. Does does that hurt as much? No. No. It kind of helps it activates whatever nervous system stuff is going on on her skin up here. Because the, the closer you brush or the closer you pull, the less pressure it is on the hair follicles. Are you ready for your haircut? Yeah. You are? Okay, do you want me to finish brushing her hair? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I don't have a spray bottle, by the way, guys. I'm sorry, we're gonna use like just um, a giganto washcloth. Now usually Naomi is all about getting her hair cut. She's kind of a little bit obsessed about it. However, she is a little unpredictable when it comes to her actions. For example, she'll push me away, she'll wipe her eyes to get the hair out of her eyes, she looks up, she's moving, okay, wait a second. I just explained like every single toddler and preschooler like I've ever known. Okay, does it hurt? No. Okay. So I'm kind of doing this, but I'm kind of pulling a little bit on her hair a little bit, just to kind of get the Can those I things. Do this Even though I might not do it. You want to do it? Okay, yeah, ready? I want to do it. You want to do it? Woo! <laughs> I like to sing to her too. A B. Nope, it doesn't work right now. Twinkle, twinkle, I wonder what you are. Every kid is unpredictable, especially how they move on the chair when they're getting their haircuts. So let's just make life a little bit easier and safer, and let's just pull out our secret James Bond weapon. It's not James Bond weapon. It's our iPad, AKA let's watch Coco Melon because she's obsessed with Coco Melon. Now it does help to have someone hold it hold the iPad for me, and uh, her sister right now totally fits the bill. Sometimes her brother will get involved, but we're going with sister today. I will have her move it around, or I'll kind of show her where to hold it so I can have Naomi move her head, so I can cut at the right exact spot. And I also want to take my time. I'm not the best hair cutter in the world. Okay, it's just reality. I'm a perfectionist. I want it just right, and I take my time when I'm cutting hair. If you've never cut hair before, you may do the same thing. If you're a professional, then you know why are you watching this video? I, I don't know why you're watching this video. Let me know if you're a professional hair cutter and you're watching this video, because I would like, well, maybe because Naomi's super cute. Okay, moving on. Now, in general, a sensitive scalp is pretty normal across the board. You're gonna have all kids, 50-50, I don't know, there's some percentage out there. You know what, I should probably look that up. Okay, I just looked it up. 
So it actually says around 40 to 50% of the people in modern society have sensitive scalps, but a lot of that does have to do with dermatology and medical stuff. So I don't know if that really applies, but, but the point is, is that we, we have sensitive scalps, regardless if we have autism, Down syndrome, or another disability, like people just, they have sensitive scalps, okay? So let's kind of talk about it. When a child is put in a hair cutting situation and they have a sensitive scalp or they have autism or Down syndrome or another disability, it can be pretty intense, all right? The slow movement of the vibrating, okay, the buzzer, the vibrating buzzer on the boys on their neck and head, the pulling, the touching, the brushing over every inch of their scalp, and even the the gentle but itchy hair cuttings that fall all around their face and neck. Okay, now which quickly, just a side note, I knew someone who actually would take a vacuum cleaner. The dad would vacuum clean, the mom would cut hair all at the same time so that their child would not get those like itchy hair cuttings all over them. It was great, but it was also very, very loud. But the kid, the kid was fine with it. Either way, all of this can be totally exhausting, not to mention stressful for the child and for the parents and for the parents, but stressful for the child. Now, with some disabilities such as autism and even Down syndrome, touch is not only the sensitivity that they may have. There's also some auditory stuff going on. I mean, of course, you don't have to have autism or Down syndrome to have some auditory sensory stuff going on, but it can become a problem. That's the point. Auditory can become a problem because that buzzer can be so incredibly loud and it's continuous and the unpredictable clipping sounds that you hear close to your ears it's all very stressful and overwhelming that's why it's so important that we become aware of things that we can do to help them cope through the hair cutting process, whether you use the vacuum to clean up things at the same time as you're cutting, whether you learn how to do it quickly, whether you use the iPad, whether you pull at little sections of their head or use your hand to kind of give them that stimulation they need on their head so they, they can easily adjust to you combing and cutting. But overall, I am actually very, very fortunate because Naomi actually loves getting her hair cut. All right, so we are done with the bangs. I could potentially just go around the whole head, but something is like giving her that video to watch. Of course, maneuvering it to get her eyes and her face to move in the right direction. Kind of a strategy it helps when you have a sibling to hold things for you. What do you say? No. But it doesn't mean you're gonna get it. I know you want it, please, but I think we're done for today. Huh? It's time to take this off. But you do look pretty. Like, look at the camera and say hi. Yeah, I did my little bit of perfectionism here where I wanted to make sure it's perfectly straight. Spray bottle, if you can do a spray bottle, much better than a washcloth, but you know what, if you don't have a spray bottle, washcloth works or shower before. I also no. notice, you know, bangs when they dry, move up. I kind of wanted her short. She looks cute when they're short. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm not gonna cut the rest. I'm gonna let this kind of grow no. out a little bit so we can do ponytails again. And it's really not that long. I like ponytails. I just want maybe the next, I don't know. We'll see how it goes on next one. Let me know. Do you like ponytails or, cause when it gets long, it just gets everywhere, like in her food. And uh, like right now, like we've got yogurt in her hair and dinner in her hair. We're going to go straight to the bathtub and wash it because she's got little pieces of like, hair, like, like, not just on the floor, but like on her face. Do you have some on your nose? Yeah, you have some on your nose. Okay. So we're just going to say goodbye now. We're going to finish up this video right now because I'm going to go ahead and put her in the bathtub. What do you say? No. Yeah, hopefully you get some tips with cutting hair. Sensory processing disorder is like a real thing. So now you see a bunch of your hair on the floor. What do you think about that, princess? Do you want to take off your cape, Supergirl? No, no, no. What? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. What? You want more? You want more haircut? Yeah. But we're all done. Do you just like haircuts because you watch videos or you want me to play with your hair? That's it. She wants me to play with your hair. So I'm going to sit here and comb her hair for a little bit. You want to tell me what you want? I just want a trim. You want more of a trim? No. You want me to cut more? My hair has been unmanageable. Well, yeah, it has been unmanageable. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I want an updo. You want an updo? No. No? 
My hair has been manageable. No. Has, no, your hair has been unmanageable sometimes. Mm. What? I want a new color. No. You want a new color? No. What color do you want your hair? No. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'm gonna go ahead and stick some videos on my face but I will see you guys in my next video. Let me know if this was helpful and um, see you guys in the next video. Bye. I'm gonna sweep now.